Are you guys ready? Yeah, we're rolling. Yeah, we're going. All right. So, Stephen, what was and is the number one difficulty that you have had with your dyslexia, even though you've just been diagnosed only a few years ago? Yeah, five years ago I was diagnosed as having been dyslexic for my entire life, and um, which explained a lot of things. It was like the last puzzle part mm -hmm. in a tremendous mystery that I've kept to myself all these years yeah. that basically started with just things that happen when you're a kid in school and you're a slow reader. Yeah. And in my case, I was actually um, in uh, unable to read for, for at least two years. Uh, I was two years behind the rest of my class. And of course, I went through what everybody goes through yeah. is teasing. Yeah. And I had to go through that for a long time. And so the teasing, you know, led to a lot of other problems I was having in school, but it all stemmed from the fact that I was embarrassed yeah. to stand up in front of the class and, 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 and read. So you have always kind of known that you were a little different than everybody else. Yeah. How has making friends been for you when you were a kid? And what was that like? Well, I could make friends in, in sort of my own, you know, social, social uh, circle, you know, sure. and, and my social circle was probably a pretty big social circle because it was a lot of kids who had you know, you know, let's put it this way. My friends couldn't throw a football. They couldn't catch a baseball. I like the Goonies. You got it. That's why I made the Goonies. That's why I wrote the story, because yeah. cause I was a member of, of, of the Goon Squad sure. when I was a kid uh -huh. growing up. But all of my friends, as it turns out, as we all grew up, they all had different kinds of, of um, disabilities. They, yeah. they, had, they had different kinds of dysregulations. Mm -hmm. And we all had a lot of stuff in common. Uh, not the least of which, several of us were dyslexic. And dyslexia, of course, was the first thing that sure. led me to realize that I was different. Although yeah. I didn't have a name for it, I just knew that um, I, I dreaded going to school. Because if I was called on, sure. and I was told to stand in the front of the class and open my book and read from the book in the third grade, it would, yeah. it, that day would be another long day in a long series of the worst days of my life. Was there ever a teacher that said, you know, because normally the curing of dyslexia mm -hmm. or the coping starts with a caring teacher saying, mm -hmm. you know, there's something a little different about you and I would, would like mm -hmm. to help you. Was there ever a teacher that said, you know, we, we should work on this together? Yes, there was. Uh, there, there were teachers that didn't quite understand why I, 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 was, I was so behind the rest of the class and my reading skills and talk to my parents about it. But there was, there, there was nothing, you know, we're talking about the 1950s. Yeah. And there was, there was not a program that was, there, there were not books There's being nothing, written yeah. about dyslexia. Nobody diagnosed me as being dyslexic. And so all they could do was assume that I wasn't studying hard enough, that I wasn't mm -hmm. reading hard enough, that I was perhaps uh, lazy, yes. And which one of your parents was, uh, were more involved in helping you in school? My mom. Mom, yeah. My mom was involved in things like you know English and yeah. and and uh, you know and my dad was very involved with me with math and history. Mm -hmm. But they were both really really caring parents in terms yeah. of of my keeping up with my studies. Yeah. And they were very very strict about the homework. Mm -hmm. And they're very very strict. The television set was not to go on until they checked my homework. Yeah, well, you know I, that yeah, same old yeah, same yeah, old yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so when you got bullied, how did you deal with that? I got bullied. I dealt with it by making movies. Yeah. I mean, making movies was my, that was my cover-up. What was the hardest time for you uh, in school that you remember? Well, well you know, it, it was just that period, I think, of probably junior high, I would say, in mm -hmm. about seventh, eighth grade, and then, and also some high school, but I think junior high. You know, kids, before they start to see themselves f from, you know, the point of view uh, of others, can be really, really harsh, yeah. really, really mean, yeah. and 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 they don't, they can't help it, and they don't even know they're being mean. Exactly. Yeah. You know. So it, as an adult, I can look back, and and I don't have any. They don't realize the damage they're doing. I, I have no resentment or anything to, yeah. to what I went through as a kid, because I kind of understand it. Sure. But at the same time, I think it was those junior high school years that were the hardest for me. Yeah. Well, I think that's just the hardest time for every kid because every kid is crazy whether you have dyslexia, dyslexia or not. <laughs> well, we all have a lot of energy growing yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. And you know, that, that energy can be, be, can be 
put to constructive use and sometimes it can be put to damaging use yeah. when when you bully someone else, when you tease someone else, when yeah. you want to feel like you have absolute power. They don't know how to handle it. Very, yeah. very hard to, you know, when you have that much uh, to say. Yeah. And sometimes what is what you have to say is being said against others to make yourself Her feel others. superior. Yeah. And, and, and other times, and, and but I never felt like a victim. That was the important yeah. thing. I never felt like a victim. I think movies really helped me kind of saved me from shame, from, from guilt, from putting it on myself when it wasn't really you know, you know, my own burden, it wasn't my burden. Sure. And I think making movies was my great escape. That's really and how I was able to get away from yeah. all of that. And you think that can kind of show through your movies, you showed like how you felt or you know, just what you felt about the world or what you felt about uh, people teasing you, I guess, or what you were going through? Not really, my first movies didn't do that. My first movies were just basically imitations of movies I was going out to theaters to see. So yeah. I, it, they were pure, uh, you know, genre movies, you know, war movies, western, science fiction. Well, and, and, yeah, and there were no films. statements. I made no statements. I'm talking about my eight millimeter movies. Oh, I'm yeah. going <laughs> way back before yeah. I became a director. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm just saying that in, in, in light of feeling a little bit like an outsider, yeah. movies made me feel inside my own skill set. Do you wish that you were diagnosed earlier than yes. you were? Yes. Why? Because I wish I had somebody helping me to understand that there were many, many others like me, mm -hmm. and even my own friends who we weren't even able to articulate what was going on in our lives. I, I know uh, several of my friends were just like me, mm -hmm. but we didn't have the skills to talk to each other about it. Sure. And I wish I had somebody in my life then that was really able to do an intervention and get yeah. me through those rough years. Because I know the only reason why I ask you is because sometimes when kids are diagnosed, um, they don't want anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it sounds like you would, um, you know, go out to get help immediately. Yeah, because, you know, I, I, I don't want to put a Band-Aid on something. I want yeah. to, you know, figure out how to make it go away forever. And, uh, and the other thing is I'm in a business right now where reading is very important. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's of critical importance to me that I read books and scripts and, scripts and, yeah. and, and, and uh and so I've been able to overcompensate, and I just basically, with no, with never feeling ashamed of myself, yeah. will take, you know, two hours and forty-five minutes to three hours to read one hundred and twenty pages. It takes me about two hours forty-five minutes to read what m most people can read in about an hour and ten minutes. Mm -hmm. And I just know I'm still slow at reading, but I've learned to um, adjust. I just don't. I read often, yeah. but I'm I'm very. And here's a great thing also. I have great comprehension in what I read because I do read slowly. Mm -hmm. I retain almost everything I read. I don't just skip over things. Yeah. And I'm able to appreciate the writing. I'm able to kind of really savor good writing yeah. because I really take my time going through a book or a script. I read that you dropped out of high school, but you went back to high school. Is that right? I dropped out of college. You dropped out of college. Right. And then you were honored by the same college that... Well, I, uh, yeah, I was, what happened yeah. was my, you know, my... I began having children on my own. I dropped out of college to be a director yeah. when I was 21 or 22 years old. And I, was, I still had a couple of uh, years left. Mm -hmm. And I think I was a sophomore when I really dropped out. And I started having kids and my kids started growing up and they began saying, well, dad never went to college. Yes. <laughs> and so I went back to Long Beach State mm -hmm. and I was able to get the, the, the credits that I was never able to achieved then because yeah. my career got in, in way of my education sure. and I was able to go back into school again and I was able to graduate with the graduating class with the mortar board and the and and the whole regalia and that was yeah. an amazing experience I had my mom and dad with me all my yeah. kids came to the graduation yeah. and they all realized that when you start something you should finish it um, was there a specific reason other than your kids that you left uh, college I left college because I got a job yeah. made directing television yeah. in 1969, and it was, a, it was a, just a great opportunity, and I, yeah. I, I didn't just leave college, I fled from school yeah. to be a director. Yeah. So one of the things I really want to know is, what was it like getting honored by the Queen of England? That, it was a great honor. It, wasn't, it, it was the, the Queen, uh, you know, selected me to become a a honorary knight mm -hmm. uh, of, of the British Empire yeah. called KBE. And uh, it was presented to me by the British ambassador wow. in Washington, D.C. Oh, really? a number of years ago, and it's a great honor. So if you had um, 
any advice to give for young kids mm -hmm. who have dyslexia and who are just finding out what they're going through now, um, what would you tell them? Just that it's more common than, you th than, than, than you've ever could, could imagine mm -hmm. and that you're not alone yeah. and that uh, there are ways to uh, ac accelerate your reading skills, to accelerate your comprehension mm -hmm. and there are ways to deal with it. It's not an incurable thing. It's something you're going to have the rest of your life but you can sort of, you know, dart between the raindrops to get where you want to go yeah. and it will not hold you back. Thank you very much. Quinn, Steven. thank you, my friend. Good You're to talk amazing. to you. You too. As always. That was awesome. Great. Great.